to order at uh, 5.32. The secretary, please call roll. Commissioner Alderetti? Here. Commissioner Becerra? Here. Commissioner Contreras-Leo? Here. Vice Chair McLaughlin? Here. Commissioner Mendoza? Commissioner Nguyen? Here. Chair Verino? Here. And for the record, uh, Commissioner Mendoza will not be present at today's meeting. Chair, you have quorum. Thank you. Uh, please stand and join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. Ready to begin. Pledge of Allegiance. Now is the time for public comments. Does a member of the public have any public comments on non-agenda items? If so, you may fill out a request to speak form with the secretary and after introductions have three minutes to speak unless an extension of time is granted by the chairperson. Okay, seeing none, we're going to move to the consent calendar. First item of business is a consent calendar. Do we have a motion to approve items on the consent calendar? So motion moved. to approve. Just a second. I get a motion from Commissioner McLaughlin and a second from Commissioner Nguyen. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Motion passes by unanimous vote. We're moving to the business calendar. So next item is Commissioner Communication Disclosure. Do any commissioners have anything they wish to disclose with regards to items on tonight's agenda? Commissioner Becerra. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I'd like to disclose that I received a call this afternoon from uh, Mr. Michael Cho in regards to agenda item number two, and he did not provide me with any information beyond what we have in our staff reports in front of us. Thank you. Okay. Seeing no other disclosures, we'll go ahead and move on to public hearings. This is uh, the time and place for the public hearing on item number one. <laughs> which is conditional use permit numbers 2017-01, 2017-04, and 2017-05. Let me, let me read this real quick. If you wish to address the Planning Commission, please file a request to speak form with the Secretary. Comments are limited to three minutes unless an extension of time is granted by the Chairperson. The action of the Planning Commission is the final is final following consent of the City Council unless if allowed by the Santa Ana Municipal Code. An appeal to the City Council is filed with the Clerk of the Council and a copy is sent to the Planning Department within 10 days from the date of the Commission's action or unless set for public hearing by the City Council. So staff will now make a presentation. Good, I guess it's still afternoon. Planning Commissioners, Madam Chair, Planning Commissioners. I am Holly Sobolewski this evening for you while she is out of the office, and I'm here to present to you McFadden Public Market. We're asking for three CUPs tonight, and those CUPs are for allow after hours operations to 2 a.m., uh, type 47, so a full liquor license, beer, wine, distilled spirits, and allow banquet use, all within the McFadden Public Market, which is a uh, approved use out there by right. A little bit of background uh, site description here. There's the building there highlighted in red. It's 515 North Main Street. It's uh, zoned SD84, which is the transit zoning code, and has a subzone of downtown, so it's in our downtown district. And it's surrounded by a variety of uh, office uses and some commercial uses. And then you can see there to the east, there's a parking lot, uh, which is right behind it. To kind of help you reference where it's at, in case you don't recall, there's a building right there, located between a couple office buildings. It has quite a history. It was built back uh, about over 100 years ago. Uh, for the last 30 years, it was a little, uh, the arcade food court. Then it went out of business back around 2010. In 2011, an applicant came in and put in the Carmina restaurant, and they had a beer and wine license, they had a banquet facility, um, and a restaurant there as well, and they operated for about three years. They went out of business, and uh, McFadden Public Market came in, applied for a CEP, which was approved by this body about a year ago to do video games, going, roll, kind of rolling back the old days to the 80s, if you guys know the 80s, I do. But uh, all those little video game games, uh, Pac-Man and Centipede, those kind of games, so kind of roll back at what you're going to see in this facility here. 
Um, they were also going to use the ABC license and banquet facility used for that existing Carmina, but those were only good for one year, and for various reasons, the restaurant couldn't open up and be operational within a year, so they had to come back and get those new entitlements, which is before you this evening here, these new CUPs. So again, the uh, CUP for the arcade is still active, still valid, approved by this body and city council. They're coming in for the other components to make it a, a complete facility. Here's our first floor. As you can see there, there's three different kitchens. It's kind of like a mini uh, uh, Fourth Street Market out there with three different food, uh, food vendors. The ABC license is going to be for the entire building, first and second floor, kind of like what you have the Fourth Street Market where you go in and you buy the, the alcohol from one central place and it's, it's able to be transferred throughout the entire building. So that's what you see here. The first floor and second floor will have uh, the approvals will be for the alcohol as well as the after hours and, and the banquet upstairs. Then here's a copy of the second floor, or a visual second floor, uh, floor plan there. So again, the analysis, we're asking for three actions there, after hours dining, ABC license, and banquets. What they're asking for is basically what they have in many other restaurants in downtown, and what in fact, again, Carmina had there before. They want to try to be competitive and be um, vibrant, a local uh, facility out there. So what they want to do, they want to operate till 2 a.m., which is what the other restaurants have in downtown. Uh, they want a beer and wine license, including distilled spirits. And they want to be able to have a private party and private events in certain cases whenever the need arises. So that's what those three applications here before you. Uh, we have conditions of approval that address any concerns that staff may have. Uh, we also have been reviewed by different departments, fire, police, uh, building, meets all of our code requirements. And for those reasons, staff is recommending approval of the three CUPs as conditioned. If I can conclude my presentation, I can answer any questions that you may have. Thank you. Any questions of staff? Hello. Um, my first question is in regards to parking. Um, it's really tough parking and um, let's say they're renting out for the banquet hall. It's a weekend. Are they having to walk to the parking structure? Yeah, the, there's uh, the abilities, uh, some parking right behind them there. There's a few spaces behind them there. And then the nearest public parking is just across the street, uh, be northwest of the site on 5th and, and Main Street. It's about 400 and something spaces. Yes. Are there any concerns in regards, I mean, you're much closer now to the homeless population at night. At night, this is where they're settling more in this area, particularly more than down 4th Street. Any concerns there in regards to safety? Uh, not by staff. Uh, again, we've met with the police department and reviewed the application. Let's see, I believe, let's see here, they may have an entertainment permit already filed, which also requires them to provide some kind of security out there and security guards. Right, it's one for every hundred, and if there's 255 max, yeah. I don't know if they're going to be watching out for people, but um, I don't know. I guess that, that's my concern is the safety. It is mm -hmm. um, considered one of the higher crime areas, mm -hmm. even though the police said it was fine. but. It is a higher crime area. My concern is homeless. If you have a quinceanera, kids or kids, they go out to hang out. You just, those are my concerns. Sure, and we can talk to the applicant and what their plans are for security. I'm sure it's very important to them as well. Um, and how about uh, the arcade? The arcade is inside and there's a bar on the first floor and there's a bar on the second floor. Um, are kids gonna be allowed? What is the safeguard of kids? and? people, the bar, the access to it, and, and the kids being safe at the arcade. We know kids will go to the arcade on their own, but what is what are the safety measures for that? Well, that would be a great question to ask the applicant how they handle that. From us, it's just like a restaurant where we have an operational bar inside of any other restaurant there. Um, so so we, we don't see it as an issue with us as well. Um, okay, so like a pizza place, you go and families go in there and they play. They're not play just going to allow kids. Right, right. Okay. And the applicant is here, and there's three of them here from the applicant. Oh, oh, there they are. They moved on me. They're here today to answer like, any questions about the operations of the facility as well. Um, and the bathrooms. Um, it's hard to tell. I'm not a design uh, expert on them. But how many stalls are there per bathroom on each floor for the women's ooh, and the men? Ooh. Um, I can't, I can't read that plan either, it looks like here. But I can tell you there is a minimum by the building code, and they have, they have to meet that requirement. I don't know what the number is, but they do, again, have to meet that uh, standard that was by the, building, the uniform building code. What is the standard? That I do not know. Oh. That's all handled through a plan check by the plan check engineers. There's to be three stalls on the ground. Yeah. Okay.
And it said that the elevator, did I read that right? It does not need to, is there a functioning elevator for ADA? Yeah, there's not one required. Okay, Vince, what was it? Uh, there's not one required at this time. it's not required. Right. Yeah. yeah. Right, we're gonna just hear from staff, please, so we'll, we'll give you a chance to speak at a later time. Thank you. Just out of curiosity, what makes it not a requirement for someone uh, with a disability not to have access? That so we can ask the applicant. This is okay. um, handled by the building engineers, not by planning staff. Okay. Um, there's several rules and regulations for for um, elevator requirements, and so their team can can be more specific if you like. This candidate might might know. Um, the building is a historic building, and they did um, receive uh, deference based on that, and because um, the uses were the same on the top and the bottom. Okay. So, so the historic building code allows some exceptions to some of the building codes. So we're not missing anything out on the first floor from the second floor. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions, staff? Commissioner Aldrin. I, I just had. One, Vince, um, what type of analysis did staff do to, to um, support the exemption under CEQA? Uh, we, there is a, in CEQA there's a list of 32 category of exemptions and we go through one of each, each one and look and see if, if the project proposal meets that requirement. In this case it is an infill development, there's no new expansion for the project. Um, it's a licensing, licensing of a barrel wine license, um, so there's uh, the exemptions, I think this one calls out, let's see here. This one called out, okay, this is this, the general rule exemption here. So we did a, took a look at the project, we took a look at uh, potential impacts for traffic, for noise, um, um, a few couple of other conditions there and, and determined that there really wouldn't be an impact based upon the type of operations happening inside the building. And so we can determine there wouldn't be an impact on the environment. Therefore, we use this uh, general rule exemption, 15061B3, which basically says if you can determine that there's no impact. The general rule is that if to be a project <coughs> under CEQA, you have to have the potential to have, a significant, have an impact on the environment. So if it can be clearly seen, and that's the physical environment. Mm -hmm. So in this case, so, it, um, so as a result, it, because these are not actions that are moving walls, they're not creating a new use even, um, they are just allowing extended hours um, what, what are we extended Banquet hours? Banquet uses, entertainment, ABC license. ABC yeah. license. So um, for that reason, it was not considered to have a physical, an impact on the physical environment. So. And so the, the only reason why I bring it up, this is, a, a, I think, a, a fraction of what the Anaheim Packing District is. Um, but that, that has been a, a, a great success. I hope this applicant, if it's approved, has the same success. But it, the parking there has just been a nightmare. Um, at least on a Friday or Saturday or Thursday. So I, I, I thought of that in relation to the exemption. Sure. Thanks. Uh, Vince, I yes, just had I, I just had a quick question. So the ABC license is going to cover both yes. the banquet facility and mm -hmm. the one bar downstairs that will service all of the different restaurant venues plus exactly. the bar upstairs on the second floor as well and then the bar upstairs yeah. as well so it's just like the forestry market it's going to cover the entire market it's not it's not allocated to one specific restaurant it's allocated to the entire building so the owner of the, of the business will have the license so there's the potential on a saturday night to have a wedding upstairs and full service bar That's as correct. well as a full service market operating on the first floor until 2 a.m. That's correct. And we don't see any conflicts to occur? We do not know, ma'am. Is there anything else in the city that has this uniqueness to it? Well, they, several restaurants have that approval. Uh, the Majesty, the Majestic uh, restaurant, which you approved here a few months ago on, on Euclid and is similar. It's a so restaurant and a banquet facility. We approved that one. Um, 
There's some restaurants in downtown that also have a banquet uh, CEPs as well. But, okay. So. Okay. It's the banquet's going to be more of a a rarity than an everyday occurrence out here. It's just in case somebody wants to have a private party. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Yes. Uh, Commissioner McLaughlin. Um, under the condition for approval for after hours operation, item five, can you explain that a little bit? Uh, land use certificate uh, where such activities will take place outside of the restaurant's building? Yeah, these approvals are, are all for the inside of the building. So if they ever want to do anything outside, such as a public sidewalk or in a back parking lot, they got to come and get city approval, planning division approval for that. And the way we do it, so they can't do anything outside unless they come in and apply for an LUC, in which case there are some exceptions where they can have outdoor dining, for instance. But we want to put some conditions of approval on hours of operation. We want them, we want them, don't want them to be out there at 2 a.m. We want them to be moved in earlier than that so it doesn't impact anybody. And on item four, are we going to see the request for signage? Is that you will not know that's just saying if they have any signs, they have to come in and get permits to the planning and building agency. Okay. But security is only required when the banquet facility is in use. Special events, yes. Spe that's, would, that's considered a special <clears throat> yes, that's event correct. for them? Correct. Okay. How will we how will we enforce that? They're required to notify us. Okay. So it's on the honor system. Yeah, then. Well, the, the police gets a call, they'll report it back to the planning and building on the following if it happens on a weekend, we get a, a report on Monday it says this activity occurred, they were cited for this kind of violation. Then we'll follow up with with the, the operator on that uh, issue. Okay. Any other questions? Thank you. Thank you. Okay, the public hearing is now open and I have a uh, request to speak card uh, from Eric Pauci. I hope I didn't butcher your last name. Thanks. Good evening, Commissioners. My name is Eric Higuchi, uh, speaking uh, as a project property owner and on behalf of the project applicant. I want to thank city staff for their time on this, uh, um, for this commission use permit, and I uh, wanted to address a couple of the, uh, the issues you brought up here tonight um, regarding security for children. This facility or this, um, this use will be directed more towards the 25 and 30 year old crowd. This isn't like a Chuck E. Cheese, for example, where we have arcades. In fact, the arcade games we're bringing in here will be considered probably fairly boring, and, and children would not want to use those. In addition, we'll, we, will be, um, we will have a security on site for the um, pursuant to the conditional use permit. Uh, related to parking, yes, parking is tight in downtown, but that's one of the attractions of downtown for us is um, being able to be close to so many uses. We do anticipate having a shared parking agreement with the, uh, the, 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 uh, the, the lot behind us, as well as uh, relying on um, the, uh, the parking structures in downtown Santa Ana as well. Uh, in terms of the banquet facility, uh, it is unanticipated that this would ever be used for a wedding. Uh, the, uh, the interior setup would not lend itself to that, nor would, uh, I would believe, a, a, um, unless they're a very creative um, couple, would they want to have a, f uh, a wedding here with um, an ongoing restaurant on the, uh, on the ground floor. So that uh, we do not anticipate that, that type of use. You may have private events for, um, uh, Organizations look, looking to have a networking hour or, or, or a cocktail hour, but nothing formal or, uh, or, uh, or with that many people. Uh, happy to answer any questions. Um, did you have any? Questions, Commissioner Sir? Thank you, Madam Chair. So this concept, I've read in places that Los Angeles has like a similar, or maybe a couple actually. I'm not, you, please clarify for me. So I know I think it's downtown LA and there may be one, two, three or more that have done a similar concept. So if I understand correctly what I read in the staff report and what you're describing, this is something that's been done before and now it's just being introduced to Orange County and thankfully Santa Ana being the first. Correct, yes. Portland um, and Los Angeles both have successful venues where this is a, it becomes an attraction for the neighborhood around them. And that's essentially what we hope for uh, to achieve with this, uh, this property. And it would be a I, uh, it, it would be a first for, mm -hmm. um, for Orange County. Now, there are, there are what I would call nostalgic arcades in Anaheim, but they are more like museums rather than um, a, 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 a venue like this. Okay. Great. Thank you. So we're excited to be here. 
So is sure. this similar in concept to like button mash? In Echo Park, or yeah, um, if you're familiar I, with it, I'm not familiar with Button Mash. I know 82 in downtown LA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so it's similar to that. Yeah, okay. exactly. So what, one of the things that you said that caught my ear was that this is uh, aimed at 20 to 30 year olds. Is that right? 20, 25 to 30. Yeah, generally people that grew up in these types of playing in, in these arcades and malls. Right. So I would just just so you keep it in mind, this city is a young city. It's, mm -hmm. it's a lot of families here, so I would encourage you to. To reach out to, to them because that's the bulk of the people that live here. Right? Absolutely. And, and downtown, I think at, at some level they've been alienated from downtown. So. I, I think we're, we're excited to introduce Centipede or Pac Man to that, that young high school crowd. I don't know if they'll want to pay attention with their iPhones. Exactly. Yeah, pinball, all, all, all that great stuff that I love, you know, honestly. And, but. All right, my quarters are going to be lined up this time. <laughs> Any other questions? I had a question. So you, uh, you had mentioned about the banquet facility, you know, you're going to tr try to cater to networking events. But what will you be doing if you have, uh, let's say, an event where you have uh, people that are under 21 and they want to come down and do use the arcade games? It, how will you regulate that? I mean, is it in, are you are they going to be able to move freely between the second floor and the first floor, and how you control their not? I think we anticipate alcohol consumption. Fair question. I think we anticipate during the day um, when the day we if we the day we would keep the upstairs bar closed. Pr frankly, the downstairs bar closed too as well because simply people aren't using those facilities during the, during the day. Maybe beer and wine, but certainly no hard alcohol. That's how we would regulate that. And then during the night, we would make it only a 21 and over facility or bar uh, because that's what that crowd would generally want to. Um, only associate with 21 and up. So I know that in order to have the banquet facility, they've got a higher security. So right. is there, I mean, just thinking out loud, but it would probably be nice and security, you know, sort of regulated the the age and the ID things. So Absolutely. If they're going to be moving freely yeah. amongst yeah. the arcade. Right. I, I know the, the CUP only says security during bank facilities, but I, I believe we will have security on staff as for liability concerns and per insurance requirements regardless. But I don't know. Okay, thank you. Other questions? Okay. Great. So. Thank you so much for your time. Mm -hmm. Do you have any other speakers on this item? Okay, we're going to go ahead and close the public hearing and bring it back to the commission. Any sure. discussion? Commissioner Bissar? <clears throat> thank you, Madam Chair. I want to thank my colleagues for bringing up some of the issues as far as parking, but I'd like to ask um, Holly's doppelganger uh, to step up to the uh, podium please <clears throat> one of the, one of the things in regards to the parking i think i think it's great that this facility is going to rely on the uh, existing parking structure across the street because i think you know in regards to certain activities on the streets we need eyes on the streets my uncle opened up pops cafe back in the early 90s i mean he set up operating hours till three o'clock why because once it got dark at four he didn't want his waitresses out even in that neighborhood which is right adjacent to um French Park. But with that being said, what I wanted to ask you, Vince, was in the downtown, we have parking requirements that we don't have to require parking on site because of these structures, correct? I mean, and I know it's to encourage the walking and, and you know, again, eyes on the streets, right. but could you just elaborate real quickly as to how we got to that point? Because I think Commissioner Alderetti brought up uh, the packing district, which is a great example, but the packing district, one, doesn't have a, a sizable parking facility like we have, but also, two, Obviously, the zoning's a little different, but could you just explain to me why we don't require parking for some of these uh, businesses in this area? Sure. For this particular building, it's, uh, it was been there over 100 years old. It was built as a restaurant on the ground floor and, and retail offices above. So because it's non-conforming for this case, they're not required to provide any additional parking than what they've had when they were first built hundreds of years ago. Then as far as the whole transit zoning code, it recognized the whole downtown district there. For most of downtown, didn't have any, any parking because all these buildings are built 100% on the property line. Uh, a good example is the, um, the building that we were in for many years, the uh, Spurgeon building. Right. Totally complete, 100% built out there, no parking. Um, that's the way downtowns were built. Again, that's to, to get that inertia, get that activity going on there. So because those buildings are built with no parking, We've allowed that concept to continue on and on and on. And what the city did to kind of meet the needs of the community was build public parking structures. Fifth and Main, Third and Birch, uh, 
second, third and Sycamore. So mm -hmm. those kind of fill in those gaps of that parking to satisfy that parking in addition to the on-street parking requirements. So it's really because of zoning, we pretty much acknowledge that there's no parking in downtown. There wasn't when it was built. We want to keep it that way. And we got public parking lots. So the zoning tool, which is the SD84, kind of mm -hmm. confirms that. So that's something that regardless of whether, regardless of the use that was going to be going into this building, they wouldn't be required to provide some sort of on-site parking. That's correct. Okay. And, and uh, frankly, I like the fact that these guys are going to have folks coming across the street. I mean, there's going to be activity on the streets. Um, some of us were talking earlier about um, some of the, the, the folks that are in the downtown now that kind of sometimes may frighten folks a little bit. And I think that it's good to have that presence on the street. So thank you, Vince, for sure. kind of clarifying for us where it, it's good to have that. And, um, you know, with the streetcar coming in in the next couple of years, I think you'll have a nice, I mean, we already do have a vibrant downtown with a lot of pedestrian activity, and a lot of it does tend to center towards 4th Street and 3rd Street. So I, I appreciate that this development is creeping north of that area along Main Street. So I, I want to commend you guys for what you're doing. I know it's a lot of work trying to adapt a historic building to this kind of use, and you're introducing something that seems to be working in other cities beyond California even. So I just want to thank you for that. Just following up on Commissioner Clare's comments about parking, when do we hit that sort of critical mass when we decide we're going to plan for more parking, given that even on next week's agenda, there's eSports Arena, they're going to have, I think they're requesting a CUP. I'm asking because I, I really, I don't know. I mean, that uh, I don't go to downtown all that often, so I, I don't know what the activity is like. I'm there during the week, and it seems not that active, but... How do we know when we've reached that point so that we're planning appropriately? I can tell you that uh, up until a year or so ago, maybe even now, but CDA would keep track of the parking structure, the public parking structure, and keep accounts. Because we also, part of those belong to the city, and we uh, sell monthly passes. So we kind of know what that activity is going on inside of the parking structures. We have in place in the trend of zoning code there a mechanism where we could do an in lieu parking district, which we haven't gotten to that part yet, that, that function yet. So I guess when it gets closer to that critical mass, we'll have to start doing other options in order to get that parking built. Um, so really, right now, we're still monitoring the parking structures and knowing where they're, where they're at the capacities. And um, when we get to a certain point, then we'll have to start looking at other options. Um, Mr. Hara, Caribou Industries, built a parking structure on Sycamore Street. He kind of saw the need for that we need some parking downstairs or downtown. So we provide that parking structure of another four and some spaces. So. Okay, any other questions or motion? I'll make a motion that we uh, adopt the resolution approving CUP-2017-01 as condition. Uh, adopt the resolution approving CUP-2017-04 as condition. Uh, and a resolution approving conditional use permit uh, number 2017 05. Second. You guys are. Okay. Okay. The point. <laughs> okay, again. Commissioner Alder uh, is motioned, and I got a second by Commissioner Nguyen. All in favor? Aye. 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 You opposed? Congratulations. We'll move on to item number two, and this is item for conditional use permit number 2017-07. We'll hear from staff. Good evening, Madam Chair, members of the commission. Before you this evening is application number, conditional use permit number 2017-07. This is for Black Bear Diner, uh, located at 3355 South Bristol. A little bit of the project here it is an application to sell alcohol for on-premise consumption. Um, the property was actually renovated this last year as it sat vacant for a couple months. So no further alterations or expansions are proposed. Um, the application does require approval of a conditional use permit. As you can see, the site is located at the center there where the arrow, it's a little bit hard, but mostly commercial along the Bristol Arterial Street with some residential single family and multiple family to the east. Um, the zoning for that is community commercial C1. 
This is the, the site plan uh, along with the building itself. It is part of an integrated center, so there is shared parking. And um, you can see a little bit of the, the path of travel on the bottom is Bristol Street where the main entrance is. And they'll have parking throughout the entire building perimeter. This is a floor plan of where the location of alcohol is being proposed. The red square to the top is, in fact, inside the general manager's office. Um, so there'll be about I'm sorry, four, four square feet of alcohol storage. And then the square towards the right is a refrigerator where they're proposing another, uh, I'm sorry, four square feet in the refrigerator, eight square feet of storage in the manager's office which equals 12 square feet total, and, and that's less than 1%, which complies with our requirements. As stated, uh, this was a restaurant. It was the old Caro's uh, restaurant that had been operating for a, long, a number of years. They actually operated in similar circumstances, offering alcohol for on-premise consumption. Uh, the fact that this application is here before you is because the location sat vacant for uh, exceeding number of months and therefore required a new conditional use permit for you. The project will provide that added service, uh, the added amenity for residents and, and visitors in the area, and uh, standards of the municipal code will mitigate any potential negative impacts for the application. With that, staff uh, concludes the presentation and recommends approval of conditional use permit number 2017-07, and I am available for any questions that you may have. Thank you. Any questions, staff? Thank you, Madam Chair. So what are they seeking? Is it a CUP for beer and wine, or is it a full liquor license? No, uh, the application is for beer and wine. Yeah, okay. 41. They're Me not, the 41, type 41, they're not seeking for full alcohol, as this is a family restaurant, right. and there's no intention for um, distilled spirits. You gave an excellent report. That's the only thing I, I didn't see when I was looking through the, the staff report. I, I think we talked about that last time, just collectively, to want to have that in there, just it's so that we know. Too. I don't know why I didn't see it online. Oh, wait, I didn't get my phone. Under, under uh, project background and chronology. I sneaked it in, sorry. So, yes. Oh, sorry, okay. on your screen. <laughs> so, anyway, right. thank you. No problem. Uh, could you tell me what the uh, concentration of the liquor license in the area and also what the uh, um, any report uh, on the police department on this particular restaurant for the last uh, two years? Sure. Um, I believe I had printed that out, but give me a second. I know that the Santa Ana Municipal Code for on-premise uh, consumption of alcohol is not related to the uh, over-concentration, similar to the off-sale. Um, so I did get a number on that, and I'm sorry, I don't have that with me. I thought I had printed it out. But the, um, the, I did run the uh, reports for service, and in the last four months, there's only been one call for service, and it actually was for a panic hardware alarm, nothing to do with the restaurant use. Okay. So um, I'm correct, this is Type 41, ABC Type 41, is that correct? Yes, that Thank is you. correct. And the last one was from Caro's, which expired in 2015. Oh, okay. And that was shortly um, before uh, Black Bear Diner applied for occupancy. Oh, I see. Thank you. No problem. Thank you. Thank you. I'll open up the public hearing on conditional use permit 2017-07. Anyone like to speak on this item? Okay. Seeing none, we'll go ahead and close it, bring it back for a motion or any questions. I'd like to make a motion to adopt the resolution approving the conditional use permit uh, number 2017-07. We have a motion from Commissioner McLaughlin and a second from Commissioner contreras Leo. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Motion carries unanimously. We're moving on to item number three, which is the conditional use permit 2017-08. Staff will now make a presentation on this item.
Good evening, Madam Chair and, and Commissioners. Before you, we have item conditional use permit number 2017-8. Um, this is for the Buccaneer Pizza Restaurant. The restaurant is located at 2757 North Grand Avenue. The applicant is proposing to um, apply for a conditional use permit to sell um, alcohol beverages type 41 on, sell on premise consumption at an existing eating establishment. No construction or expansion of a square footage um, is proposed at this time. The site is currently zoned um, C5 Arterial Commercial Zone and is surrounded by uh, commercials, um, surrounded by commercial line uses and a school facility, facility as well. Right across on the north side, it's actually in the boundary of the city of Santa Ana, but on the north side is a 22 freeway. Here um, is a site plan of the existing facility, and um, as proposed, it is part of a commercial center. Um, there is sufficient, sufficient um, parking stalls, and it's right on the north side. And before you hear is of the floor plan of the existing restaurant, um, right in the red, right in the in the bright red square is where they propose to store the alcohol. Um, alcohol is going to be less than 5% um, per the Santa Municipal Code. And here's an existing, or sorry, in a site photo of an existing location uh, with the um, parking stalls right in front and uh, the Buccaneer restaurant. So site meets all the standards, um, all the Santa Municipal Code standards. Um, the restaurant will continue to provide a service um, to the community and its visitors. Um, and then the conditions, uh, the standards and conditions will ensure that the restaurant will not deviate anything, uh, deviate from the plan operation review. So staff recommends approval of conditional use permit number 2017-08S condition. Thank you. I can answer any questions as well. Thank you for your time, Commissioners. Just a couple of quick things. First of all, Greg Hanover with Alcohol Policy Advisors. My partner is Lauren Tyson. She is former district administrator with ABC, creator of the ABC League training program. She's nationally known. Okay, no one has to applause. Um, just want to thank um, Scarlett. Uh, <laughs> she's too good at finding every flaw in a plan. Uh, required us to make many changes, which she's doing her job well. And the reason I appreciate it, she's always smiling. She never judges you for the mistakes we made, and we made several. She did a wonderful job protecting the city. I'd like to recognize the applicant, Jeff. It's a family-owned business. Jeff worked with Lauren and I to document 16 pages on how to serve alcohol responsibly. Within his 16-page document, which I, sus I don't know if you have or not, it was submitted with the plans. There's a management alcohol plan. There's a security plan. There's a procedure on how to cut off customers, how to check IDs properly, how to create a drug-free environment. And most impressive, I think, um, we firmly believe no one should serve alcohol, even one drink, before they get some kind of formalized training. There's a six-page document that's called Before You Serve Alcohol that talks about the ABC laws and about how to serve alcohol responsibly, that he's committed to make sure no employee serves one drink before they go through that training, which acts as a bridge before they get the formalized <clears throat> RBS training lead or another type of training that the city requires. Any questions? Any questions the applicant? Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we'll go ahead and close the public hearing and bring it back for a motion. Is sure all ready? Uh, I just wanted to note for the record, the first place I ate in Santa Ana when I moved here was Buccaneer Pizza. Uh, I thought that was your car in front of you. No, that's my car parked on the drive. Yeah, I was missing the beer. Uh, so I, I'd like to make a motion to adopt uh, a resolution approving CUP number 2017 08. Second. They're not doing beer delivery. From though. Commissioner Alderetti and a, a second for Commissioner Becerra. All in favor? Aye. 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 Congratulations. Thank you. The next item is the zoning ordinance uh, amendment 2016-03.
Good evening, uh, Chairperson, members of the Planning Commission. Uh, this proposal in front of you tonight is the uh, Zoning Ordinance Amendment, ZOA number 2016-13. We are proposing to amend um, several sections of the Santa Ana Municipal Code to basically streamline our code as well as our development processes. Uh, in addition, we want to respond to the current uh, development trend uh, and also be in compliance with the state and federal laws. We have presented uh, this proposal to the Zoning Code uh, Subcommittee uh, twice, uh, which I believe uh, uh, in the last year. I'm gonna start with uh, the first uh, three sections that we're uh, amending. This includes uh, section 41-593.4, which has to do with the SD sampling review process. Currently, the SD sampling review will need to go to Planning Commission for approval. The proposed amendment will change that to the Zoning Administrator. The next section that we're uh, amending is section 41-593.5. This has to do with the minor exceptions for parking. Currently, this process is um, reviewed and approved by the Zoning Administrator. The proposed amendment will change the authority to the planning manager. The next section is section 41-638.1 and section 41-639. This has to do with the planning commission authority of discretionary actions. Currently, all planning commission actions will be referred to the city council on the consent calendar for confirmation. This proposed amendment will um, allow the Planning Commission to make the final decision unless it's appealed to the City Council. The next slide summarizes uh, the two uh, sections that we are amending which will um, streamline our development standards for development processing. The first one is section 41-668 and section 41-669. This has to do with our current site plan review process. Currently, any project over 500 square feet are required to go through site plan review. This could be very costly and, and takes a lot of time. The proposed amendment will change this threshold from 500 square feet to 2,500 square feet. So this will allow the smaller uh, development project to be approved at staff level, which will substantially reduce the amount of uh, processing time and also save a lot of money for uh, the small developers. Uh, the next section is 41-1309 and 41-1309.1. This will allow the change of use in smaller uh, and larger shopping centers in the city, a lot of these ten tenant spaces needs to be replaced with a new tenant. Under the current code, uh, they would have to be in compliance with the parking standards. So for example, if you have an office use that you want to replace it with a medical office, it is uh, very difficult to replace that tenant space because our code for medical space is twice as much uh, for office use. Um, the same as uh, any retail tenant, if they were to replace by a restaurant use, it is extremely difficult because of our parking requirements. With the proposed amendment, we will allow any tenant space up to 2,500 square feet to be replaced by another use even if it requires more parking. We have the list of uses that specified, which is included in your staff report. These uses will be able to interchange with each other without having to comply with the current parking standards. The next uh, slide, which summarizes the uh, reduction of our current parking standards. Uh, this has been a, a long uh, needed uh, amendment um, in the past 20 years, we've done a number of uh, parking variances, 
parking variances to allow parking reductions. So this table basically summarizes the most um, requested uh, parking variances in the last, I would say, two decades, which including uh, restaurants, uh, medical office, exercise gyms, and churches. So the current standards for restaurant is 10 spaces per thousand. The proposal would be eight spaces. The medical office uh, require, requirement is six spaces currently. The new proposal would be five spaces. The exercise gyms requirement is currently 35 spaces per every thousand square feet. And the proposed uh, amendment will be 5.5 spaces. The, uh, for churches is 28.5 spaces currently, and it will be 20 spaces. This will substantially um, help our business and development community to be able to bring in uh, uses that are uh, suitable for the, the space. Staff is recommending the Planning Commission to make a recommendation to City Council to adopt an ordinance approving the Zoning Ordinance Amendment number 2016-03. This concludes staff's presentation, and I'm here to answer any questions that you might have. Thank you. Do you have questions of staff? Commissioner Thank you, Madam Chair. So just fantastic presentation, and I appreciate what you're bringing to us. I mean, these are great things to to help streamline some of the processes. Um, just one question was, from what you presented to us today, has anything changed from what you presented to Commissioner McLaughlin and I, uh, I think it was the February 3rd meeting that we had at the subcommittee, were there any changes to from then to now? Yes, the, the only addition was, um, <coughs> The section 41-638.1, which has to do with the, the Planning Commission Review Authority, this one was added from the, the last study session. Oh, wait, now this is the one where the off-street parking variance is going to the um, planning manager. No, this one it has to do with the discretionary action um, that will end at the Planning Commission unless appealed to City Council. Wait, did you say 41-638.1? Yeah. yeah. Yes, number five. Okay, so minor exceptions from the off-street parking regulations. Oh, in use. I, oh, 639, I'm sorry, 639. Six, six, yeah, oh, 639. You need a bigger screen, Phil. I know, no doubt. Um, the right now your the applications that you review you're not the final action they all go to council for their confirmation mm -hmm. and this would eliminate that so process. so once once let's just say like any of the conditional use permits tonight that the commission approved they would not even appear on the city council agenda unless someone filed an appeal that's correct okay great thank you Yeah, as to, I'll refer to the item on the memo. Uh, so item six, which is 41-669 and 668. So it, I see that the, I think it's a good idea to go up from 500 square feet to 25. Does the threshold dollar amount stay the same? At no, 50, the dollar amount would be eliminated. It would just strictly right. based on the square footage. Okay, that's great. Um, and then I'm looking at table two. Well, I'm trying to figure out, I'm trying to do an apples to apples comparison. Uh, it seems like we're parking the exercise gyms still kind of high. Um, although I see Anaheim's at 5.5, but I can't, what does is, what is Long Beach end up being if it's 20 per thousand square feet versus uh, square footage of gross floor area? It just, it just seems like a, a lot of cities over park exercise gyms. Um, so that's, I mean, if that's what the community decided, that's fine. The, it seems high. Yes, the 5.5 spaces came from the last few mm -hmm. um, variances request. 
Uh, each one of them has right. prepared a parking analysis and it was um, determined the proper rate at 5.5, so we just used that okay. number. Yeah, that's it for me. Any other questions? I just want to um, congratulate staff for job well done. This is really will stimulate the economy and economy and also promote the Santa Ana as a business friendly. Because the guideline requirement for parking uh, spaces for a restaurant and medicals, I guarantee you will stimulate a lot more the business development in our city. And again, thank you. I would. Uh, I guess this this motion this does not require the vote of the planning commission. It's only our planning commission recommends the council approve this only ordinance amendment. Yeah, is I mean, that a required vote? Voting? Yes, it's still, still an action? action that requires. Okay. Thank, yeah. you. Thank you. So we'll go and open a public hearing, and seeing uh, no one in the public who would like to speak on it, we'll go ahead and close it. <laughs> Bring it back. Any questions uh, amongst the commissioners? Madam Chair, Commissioner, I'd like to ask Commissioner Alderetti a question. So I, I agree with you. I think we do overpark our, our gyms, I think, and staff may be better aware of this than we are. We approved a variance over on Bristol and Memory, and I forget how many hundreds of spaces it was. Planet Fitness? Yeah. Planet, Fitness Planet Fitness, correct, right. Hundreds of spaces. I mean, you go to some jurisdictions, you're lucky you get a one or two space variance and we did hundreds. So that's one of the reasons I'm excited about this coming to us to, to make these changes now. But I guess, again, just a friendly conversation here. What would you be more comfortable with? Because I think if we were to go a little lower, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be opposed to it. So I didn't serve on the committee. It struck me as I looked at this and just kind of the experience I have on the commission mm -hmm. that four would be fine, but I'm, not, I'm kind of shooting in the dark on that because mm -hmm. uh, well, the, the reason why I think they came to this conclusion, so um, Commissioner McLaughlin and I had asked them, so what was the basis of their recommendation? And they came back with this chart as to say, based on the sampling, and then also I think as, as um, staff had said, that based on what they were seeing as, as variance requests, that was their sweet spot. Oh, but 5.5, you get it down to 5.5. Because I mean, I, I think a lot of what we're seeing in front of us is really to kind of assist staff on their workload, because these are some things that really aren't necessary for them to go through the elongated process that they're currently going through. So, but I mean, you know, the lower we make it, the more, or I'd say the less that staff has to endure as far as variance requests. So that's why I just bring it up. I'm not, I'm not a, I mean, a I think also it's kind of like see how it works out type of. We can do that. Well, plus I'm not only saying that because right. there's some deliberation that went into it and I'm, I'm not gonna pre, I'm, I really am shooting. But I think if, if there was an analysis that produced a 5.5, that's more than what I'm basing it on, <laughs> which is instinct. Right it's, now, it's just incredibly high. Right. I mean, we're way, way out of yeah, It's like, it's like two price. cars per bicycle or something in the gym, right? Or, or gym. <laughs> something I mean, ridiculous. It's, it's awful. As many gyms as there are, there are shared lots with other businesses. That's right. right. So, Let's say, for instance, the LA Fitness at Bristol MacArthur, that lot is completely packed, and it's not the gym, it's the restaurant, the, what's it called? Thanks, Baja. No, it's the shrimp place. <laughs> Baja? Baja Fish. No, Baja Fish Tacos. No, it's the one on the corner. Um, um, kicking crab, all right. kicking crab or something, so boiling, oh, crab. boiling crab. Oh, boiling crab, there boiling you go. Crab. Oh, you're thinking the other corner. I, I was thinking yeah, the other yeah. one. Boiling crab, yeah. The crab, yeah. yeah. Uh, no, no, kicking crab. Uh, right. Crawfish. Right. So I, like, even at the Planet Fitness at Memory, you've got now those restaurants, now that they've added karaoke and done other things, they start to being taken. So I think it kind of evens out at the end of the day. But because they're not marked, right? right. They're not marked right. No. to the gym. No. no. Just like 24 hours at any place. It's, it's open. Kind of, I see that happening. But, but that's also because they didn't really probably have a choice in where they could go because the shared lots gave them the parking they right. needed to get their approval. So right. this will probably allow some smaller or even some gyms to go into places where they don't have the parking right. or don't have, have to have as much. Yeah. So, yeah. 
And then another thing I think we see here with <clears throat> with these recommendations is as we go through the wholesale zoning code update, I think you'll see a lot of these change as we do the environmental reviews and other studies. So, I mean, this, correct me if I'm wrong, staff, but this is just more of a kind of to get us to the finish line, really. Right. Okay. This is actually, this is the starting line. We're the starting, the starting line, line, correct. There you go. Okay. No, I, I like I like what I see. In fact, um, I, I'd say, so, we've closed the public hearing, right? Yes. Okay, so I, I'd make a motion that we um, recommend to the city council that they um, adopt the zoning code ordinance amendment in front of us this evening. I'm, I'm second. Okay. okay, I got a motion from Commissioner Becerra and commission, uh, second by Commissioner Nguyen. If there's no other discussion, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Great. Right. They get through that housekeeping. I know. Okay, so that will conclude the business calendar, and then we have uh, absences. We do have an absence, so uh, someone like to motion. Motion to approve her absence. Approve the absence for B. Mendoza. I guess uh, motion, Commissioner Becerra, second. Commissioner Aldredi, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, now we're going on to comments. We have uh, staff comments. Aye. Yes. Good evening. We had our second general plan uh, update meeting a couple weeks ago. It went, uh, it went very well. We were looking at the big picture. Our third one will be this Wednesday evening, and um, we tend to we have pretty good attendance. Most nobody's dropped out yet, which has been um, quite. We've been quite proud of that because it's a lot of work. Um, and then regarding our uh, work program, we are going to be continuing it to another night where we have um, a little more time to go through that. But other than that, there are no other staff comments. Okay, thank you. I'll move on to commissioner comments. Uh, commissioner Wynn? Okay. Commissioner McLaughlin, have anything? Uh, no. Commissioner Allred? Can I speak on it? Because it is not on the agenda. It's not. Okay. No, I'm kidding. No, I haven't. Commissioner Turner's video. No comment. And I have none as well. So we'll go ahead and close the meeting. Good job. Thank Keeping you. this one under an hour.